Hey guys, Chaos here with another Minecraft 101 for you. Today I'll be going over, as promised, items with a right click ability. And before I get things started off, I just want to point out that I do have two new items here that I added off camera since the last video. They are the Glass Sphere item and the Staff Standard item. Neither of them do anything, just like the Obsidian Rod, so you don't have to worry about that. They're both completely blank. Um, the only thing that I have changed that I want to show you is set max stack size. And I only changed that off camera because it's more or less self-explanatory. Obsidian Rod and Glass Sphere have a max stack size of 16, just like eggs and ender pearls, And the Staff Standard has a max stack size of 1, just like any other tool, like a sword or a pickaxe or you know whatever so to show you guys what I'm gonna be doing I'm just gonna copy this right down and I'm going to rename it to the staff solar the solar staff as I'm going to be calling it from here on out is going to be a item that will advance time forward until sunrise and if you use it during the day, I don't want it to do anything. It'll only be activated during the night, and it's going to gradually advance time from night into day. And I just want to make sure to get everywhere that it says standard and retype that out the solar. And I do want to change this item ID number here. There we go. And as you can see, we got this little red underline here. Normally what I do seeing as how the error is that item staff solar doesn't exist because we haven't made it yet so I just roll over it and come down here to create class item staff solar but if we go on creating a new file for every item that we put in the game we're gonna have a lot of files really quick so instead what I've done is I created a file for my item staff standard right here item staffs and if I open it you can see that, you know, item stuff standards in there. Again, it doesn't do anything, just like the obsidian rod. But if I pop down a couple lines right here, I can go ahead and create another class for my item staff solar. It'll extend item, just like everything else we've made so far. And again, just like everything else, it will have this constructor with an int ID and we will pass it to our super. And there we go. It's more or less just an exact clone of the item staff standard at this point. And so to give it a little bit of, you know, magic to it, since it's supposed to be a magic staff, we'll come down here and we'll use a function from the item class. To see what all is inside the item class, we'll just right click it here, open declaration. And as you can see, there are all these items to find up here at the very top. We've got our pickaxe steel, that's the iron pickaxe. We've got our ingots, uh, axes, pickaxes, you know, every item in the game, I think, is defined right there. But beyond all of these definitions, you can see right here that there are some member functions as well. And the one we're looking for, on item use could work for this, but I believe it only triggers when you're looking at a block. Like a bucket of water, for example, you can't just place a bucket of water in the sky or something. You have to be facing a block in order to put it down. But on item right click right here, will be able to function regardless of where you're looking, even if you're just staring straight into the sun, you know? It doesn't matter. So I'm just going to copy this. Mostly I'm copying it because it has a long list of parameters here that I just don't feel like typing out. And I'll just paste it right here at the bottom. Move this over. And to go over briefly what functions are defined like, you can see it's defined public, just like a variable would be, so that anything can access it. And then you can see a type. This type is what the function must return. In other words, if you had a calculator function, it would return an int. You'd pass it, you know, 
two numbers and a sign, maybe a plus sign, minus sign, you know, something like that, and it would return whatever the answer is. In this case, we're returning an item stack. And so I just want to come over here and rename some of these variable names because they're really overly long. They don't really need to be this long. So I'll just knock them back a couple characters. And there we go. No red underlines, we're good to go. And so the first thing we want to do, like I said, I don't want the item staff solar to do anything whenever it's daytime. So I'm going to check to make sure that it's not daytime. Sunset is 13,000. So what I want to do is I want to check if world get world time is greater than 13,000. And if it is greater than 13,000, I'm sorry, I want to do if less than 13,000. It can get complicated sometimes, give me a break. Alright, and if it is less than 13,000, I want it to return stack. Return will simply end the function right there. It won't proceed to the next line or anything, it just ends right there. So that means that the only way you'll get to here is if the world time is greater than 13,000, which would mean it's night and not daytime. And so I'm going to come up here and create a boolean. Booleans are just sort of true or false, you know, on or off. So I'll create a boolean that's called active and set it to false by default. And down here on on item right click, I will set active to true. <clears throat> and the reason I'm not going to put the world changing code, I mean the time changing code right here, is because this code activates whenever you right click, but only when you right click. And so unless you held down right click the whole time, time wouldn't change. And I don't want that. On the other hand, if you did have an item where that's useful, then, you know, there you go. That's how you do it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head down a couple more spaces here, and I'm going to use another of items, various functionalities. That is, if I can find it, let me just search for it. On update right there. Again, I'll copy it because it has this long list of parameters here. Paste. And as you can see, this function, again, is public, but it's of the type void, which means that it doesn't require anything to be sent back. It doesn't require a re return value. So if you just did return like that, it's perfectly acceptable. In fact, on a void, you can even leave it blank without anything at all. The only reason that you'd really need to use a return is if you wanted to end the function early, like we did here. So on update, what we want to do is check and see if active is, well, active. So if active there we go. We want to do world dot get world time right there mm. world dot set world time actually so we want to set the world time to the current world time plus 200 that way we get this nice gradual fade from night into day rather than just suddenly going from night into, you know, noon or something like that. So what we want to do is next is add in a condition that active will be disabled, which really I guess should go above active because if there's a condition where we don't want time to advance anymore, we need to tell it that before it advances time makes sense right so world get world time is greater than 24,000 the reason I'm doing this is that normally Minecraft 
will turn time from 24,000 to zero. In other words, it kind of wraps around like the hours of a day. But an odd little glitch I found whenever I've tried to do this before, or at least something similar to this, is that Minecraft doesn't seem to wrap uh, the time around whenever you advance it yourself. In other words, we can get well up into 30 or 40,000, and it'll still just keep on going. So if world time is greater than 24,000, we just want to set the world time to the current world time minus 24,000. Let me go ahead and add these curly brackets here. They're not strictly necessary, but they do just, um, you know, they make it a little easier to see clearly what you want to be inside the if and what you don't. So, is there anything else? I think there was something else I was planning on adding right here. Oh, right, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't tell it when to turn active off yet. So I want to do if world get world time is less than 13,000, then active equals false. Again, just like I did up here, I'm checking to see if it's daytime or not. So as soon as it's sunrise, whenever it hits 24,000 and wraps back around to zero, I want active to be set to false so that it does not advance time anymore. Something I should do, I guess, is make sure I don't want to be messing with the world time unnecessarily, so I just want to make sure that this will only fire whenever active is actually active. There we go. I'll save that, and I'll go ahead and add the mod loader stuff and our mod spellcraft, such as adding texture and adding a name and stuff like that, and then I'll go ahead and start up Minecraft, and uh, once all that's done, uh, I'll come back. I'll just go ahead and stop the recording now, so I'll see you in a sec. Alright, so here we are back in Minecraft once again. I got my solar staff out. It is nighttime. It is the moment of truth. Drum roll, please. Imaginary drum roll, anyway. Alright, so... Right click. There it goes, there it goes. Stop. A little past the horizon where I've liked it to stop. But I think it is pretty darn good for, you know, just sort of coding it up. If I wanted to go back and debug it, troubleshoot it, you know, whatever, of course I could, but I'm not that concerned with it. And there you guys have it, an item with a right-click ability. I guess that sort of wraps things up for this video, guys. So the next video I'll be focusing on will be items with durability and... I guess after that will probably be enchantments if I get around to it. And if you guys have any suggestions on either, you know, just something to throw in the next video or a video all its own, then don't be afraid to let me know. Like, um, someone suggested I make a video for armor, so I'll probably bump that up a couple videos on my priority list. And... You know, if someone else out there wanted to see a ring that spawned lava or, you know, something like that, well, that's more or less what I just covered in this tutorial, I'd be more than happy to help you out. So even if it doesn't get a full video tutorial, I'll still PM with you back and forth, or, you know, as much as I can and try and help you out whenever I can. I'm no programming god or anything, so I won't be able to solve all your problems all the time, but... I am here if you run into any errors or have any questions. So, again, look forward to that next video. It will be durability once again. This is Chaos Being signing off.